Hi, I'm Christopher Brenner with the Muscle Doc Method, and today I want to demonstrate a, uh, a treatment here uh, for thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, I'm going to be covering uh, a variety of techniques. Uh, I'm going to be starting with some advanced myofascial techniques. I'm going to be doing some bloodletting and uh, some acupuncture with moxa. So uh, this video will give you an idea of how adding advanced myofascial techniques to your treatments could significantly improve your benefits. So first things first, with thoracic outlet syndrome, there are two of the most common areas of nerve entrapment is going to be uh, up here where the uh, brachial plexus goes underneath the clavicle. And then the second location is going to be uh, here within the pec minor. Now my model here has had trauma to this area and when palpating on the tissue, it feels very hard, congested. It doesn't give any type of give when pressing on it. There's just a lot of resistance. So what we want to do is break this fascial tissue up and allow this nerve to move more freely and allow this shoulder joint to have more freedom of motion too. So the first area we're going to start working on is in the scalenes. We're going to start off with just some basic massage therapy techniques. As you can see that I'm just using the pad of my thumb to work in this tissue. And as I'm working in here, I'm evaluating on uh, what this tissue feels like and if there's any limitations, possible obstruction of that uh, brachial plexus. And there certainly is not much room in this clavicle underneath here. And um, that uh, is the first place I really want to look at. I'm going to just continue to work on this area here, soften it a little bit. And he's uh, resting his head comfortably in my uh, palm of my other hand. Uh, the patient doesn't have to do really anything. So first, what I want to do is we're going to start by shortening the scalenes and moving the head towards the affected side. And then I'm placing my thumb firmly on, on the scalenes and then we're going to laterally flex away while I glide down the muscle tissue. Again, we're going to start with lateral flexion towards the treatment side and we're going to open that up. And there's a lot of just very firm, tight muscle tissue in here. I would suggest that it's poorly oxygenated. It's been a long-standing injury and problem. Again, we're going to laterally flex towards the treatment side. And then we're going to open up and laterally flex away while applying tension over muscle tissue. We're going to rotate the the head towards the opposite side, taking the pads of your fingers, and we're going to work here along these scalenes. Just applying a nice firm pressure in the area. Our goal is to uh, so you get chi and blood to start circulating more smoothly through this whole fascial chain that we're going to be working on today. And we're going to laterally flex towards the treated side and then laterally flex away by gliding that muscle along those scalings. Now, if you've seen my video with the uh, neck demonstration stretches, 
uh, that would certainly be applicable in this case of cr uh, creating some space by stretching the fascia both in the scalenes and the SCM. I'll leave a link um, either in the description or in the video uh, up top for you to take a look at those. Being mindful of how the patient is receiving the amount of pressure that you're applying to the area. Now to get underneath this clavicle here, what we want to do is take our thumb and we want to go along the border's edge and kind of feel what it's like in there. Now you do have to be careful because of the nerve that is innervating underneath. Um, they're going to feel that referring to the shoulder. But we want to get underneath there and we want to get some space. So I'm going to hold my thumb there and I'm going to stretch this open. And in this technique, I'm going to use both of these pads and I'm going to be scooping that fascial up towards the neck. And we're going to start by laterally flexing and we're going to scoop that up away. I'm going to really get underneath there and we're going to scoop that up and away. Let's get a little stretch while we're here. We're going to go ahead and rotate our head, chin towards the opposite side. Let's apply our other hand here on the left shoulder, placing our hand around the head, and then rotating towards the side. And let me know when I get to the edge of your stretch. Pretty good there? Yeah. Good. And go ahead and take a nice big inhale and exhale and we just want to go to the comfort level we're not trying to uh, um, overly stretch or st creating some space in that uh, in that fascial uh, plane here and next we're going to move to the chest So working on the chest, we have several uh, structures we want to focus in on. One is this subclavius, which going underneath and, and palpating over it is extremely tonic and, and intense. So um, quite possibly the, the nerve is, uh, is stuck inside that, uh, that tunnel space there. And then this pack, we want to work through the pack this pec minor has a tremendous amount of tension and for right now just kind of working around seeing what this uh, tissue feels like so I'm just using the pad of my fingers and just rotating around I'm noticing on this uh, junction right here of the pec uh, moving through and meeting up with this anterior deltoid there's a lot of just tight, stuck fascial tissue that's adhered to one another. So we're going to be essentially trying to free that space up. Now some of these techniques I'm going to do is um, you'll find them on my advanced myofascial technique course. Uh, the upper extremity course is uh, available online. You can check out uh, the link in the description and then seminars will be held uh, next year. So here's a little sample of what you could learn in that. So in our subclavius muscle, we have to know where that's located and that's just inferior of this clavicle, kind of underneath the clavicle. And what we're going to have is our patient is going to depress the shoulder and then we want them to shrug and bring the shoulder up to their, uh, towards their ear. 
and we're going to come back to our starting position where it's going to be a depressed shoulder down and then a shrugged shoulder up towards the ear. Now what we want to do is we'll provide a little bit of support with this opposite hand holding the elbow and we want to find that clavicle and we're going to get underneath there and we're going to start here and we're going to ask them to slowly shrug the shoulder while we're applying pretty firm tension immediately along the inferior border of this clavicle. And be careful, the, 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 the tension uh, increases rapidly. So again, we're going to get down here. I'm using my thumb and we're going to apply some firm pressure in our starting position with a depressed shoulder and we're going to have him shrug the shoulder. Good, applying firm pressure along the inferior border of the clavicle. Good, and then back down. And we're just going to go ahead and give that tissue a little break, probably revisit that um, in a little bit. But it's nice to give it a little break so it has time to just respond. And I'm just going to do some circular motions here along the uh, pec minor. Now to focus and treat on the pec minor, what we want to do is we're going to bring this arm into an adducted position and we're going to think about externally rotating it. And as we can see with this patient, we have a significant reduction of range of motion into that external um, direction. So taking the pads of my finger, we're going to start here with an adduction and we're going to apply uh, firm pressure going immediately and inferiorly along that pec major. And we're going to go ahead. And we want enough pressure to get in, but allowing that muscle to glide underneath our fingertips. Same thing, we're going into that external rotation. And I'm not trying to apply any more pressure to get, go further. That's where it wants to stop. That's where we're going to respect that boundary and slowly work it up over time. Again, we're starting in this adducted position, moving out into external rotation, and I'm gliding over that pec minor. Excuse me, gliding over that pec major. And we'll go ahead and take our fist just to get a more of a broad stroke here through the pec. And working along the uh, sternal uh, attachments of the pec to the sternum. Again, we're going to use our fists now that we're getting a little bit more deeper into the muscle tissue, starting in this adducted position and externally outward as we're gliding firm pressure along this pec major. Okay, we'll get that a little break. And you do want to instruct that your uh, patient uh, is just going through a nice breathing routine, very focused in on their breathing. Now for the pec minor, it's a very similar uh, movement as the subclavius where we're going to start in a depressed uh, shoulder and then we're going to ask them to shrug. But what we're going to do is we're going to find that coracoid process and then our tension is going to be uh, distally immediately along that pec um, minor. So we're going to go ahead and shrug the uh, shoulder and then we'll have them go ahead and, and actually in this case I'm going to provide some extra assistance with this arm by holding the elbow, finding contact along the coracoid process just below it and then we're going to go ahead and shrug the shoulder and we're going to glide 
along that pec minor in there. Good. We're going to bring it back down. And again, we're going to go ahead and shrug. Good. Maybe get some circular motions. I feel how tight that pec minor is uh, right there. So we spend a little bit of extra time on it and then we're gonna give them a break. And we'll go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths. And one more time over that pec minor. Good, and we're gonna go ahead and shrug. Again, our direction is immediately and inferior. Good. And we'll go ahead one more time, just flushing through this area. Now working on this anterior shoulder, we're gonna be getting into the uh, bicep muscles, this coracobrachialis. We're not going to focus on the serratus anterior or the uh, subscap in this particular demonstration, but certainly these would be applicable. So, we're going to work along this anterior shoulder here. And there's a tremendous amount of just adhesive tight, tense muscle tissue. You can tell that this shoulder has had uh, problems with ranges of motion for quite some time. And what we want to do is we want to focus on peeling that pec major off of that anterior deltoid. Again, we're going to start with the elbow bent and what I want to do is place my thumb right between that line and we're going to get a bit of an external rotation. And we're going to insist and support with the following hand. And we're going to peel that anterior deltoid off. And this is a very sensitive area to work on, so you have to be very mindful of how much pressure you're putting over that bicep tendon in there and the bursa. And we'll just do some warming up here in the area. And we're just going to bring this arm up here. I'm going to find that line between the two muscles and we're going to externally rotate, pushing this anterior delt off of that pec minor. And we're going to have our patient slide towards the end of the table and we're going to hang the shoulder towards me. We're going to hang the shoulder off the table a little bit more. Okay. And our motion, we want to let this arm kind of hang to get a bit of a stretch in this area. So we're going to start in this position, working this anterior delt, and then we're going to get a bit of a stretch here. And we're going to again bring it into flexion, moving it into an extension. And I'm just going to the edge of his range of motion. I'm not trying to push it anywhere past what he is comfortable with um, doing. And let's go back and move towards the center of the table. Now working on this coracobrachialis and uh, bicep here, which this whole fascial plane is just tense and stagnant. So we're going to have uh, some, some good, good tools we're going to be applying today. 
here and stay tuned. We're going to do some acupuncture, we're going to do some bloodletting on this as well. We're just going to warm this uh, muscle tissue up here a bit. Now this coracobrachialis is this small muscle here. It does, uh, does attach to that coracoid process, uh, same location where the uh, pec minor does. So I am going to adduct the arm in this direction. I'm going to take my tension. And you want to be careful of the nerve roots that here are on the medial portion of the arm. So you're just coming above that. I'm taking my pressure and then I'm opening the arm out. We're shortening the muscle and then we're bringing that out and lengthening the muscle. Now this area does have a tendency to start burning on the skin so I would say apply some more oil or to make sure that you have a firm grip on the um, on the tissue and switch hands here and bring that out we're going to work and slide firmly along this whole muscle give them a little break allow that to Loosen up a little bit. Now again, I'm going to take the firm pressure here with the tips of my fingers. We're going to go ahead and shorten this muscle. And then we're going to lengthen and open this muscle up and out. Now let's move down further to this bicep. And in palpating here, you also want to feel, see how the intermuscular septum is feeling right here. Uh, the intermuscular septum is between the biceps and the triceps and certainly feeling some congestion going on in this area right here. So what we'll do is we'll come just below the uh, bicep here. We're going to bend the elbow and then we're going to go ahead and open that up. Then we're going to go right along that inferior border of the bicep and along that lateral intramuscular septum. These techniques can be done in a seated position as well. Good, and moving along firmly. Trying to keep that thumb straight, avoid bending so it doesn't place any uh, unnecessary stress on, on your uh, joint. Good. Now moving up to the bicep, we're going to start in a short position and apply some firm pressure along that bicep. Good, again, I shorten it. Moving along, applying some, some passive range of motion along the muscle tissue. Now we can come down to the attachment uh, down here. Again, we're going to shorten the muscle and let's go ahead and lengthen it. Now, so working on the forearm, you can still feel that the fascial tissue it, it continues tension down this, uh, this meridian, this fascial plane. And uh, so it's necessary that we treat this as well. And you can see how the forearm is feeling 
on both the um, posterior and anterior aspects. See how the brachial radialis is, is doing on the uh, nerve that innervates through this area. We certainly have some, some tension through here. So working on the brachial radialis. And again, you can learn these advanced myofascial techniques in my online upper extremity course uh, by going into great detail of how to, uh, to work effectively on this muscle tissue. But we're gonna supinate this forearm. We're gonna grab, place our palm over the brachial rad radialis, being sure not to compress it over the bone. That hurts, don't do that. And then we're gonna extend the arm we're going to flex the wrist and we're going to glide over that tension right there over that brachial radialis. Good. And again, we're going to supinate the forearm, grab our tension, move along this direction, flexing the wrist, extending the elbow. and working on freeing up this uh, muscle tissue. Same thing, switching directions on the other side of the brachial radialis, supinating this forearm, extending the elbow, flexing the wrist, moving along that brachial ra radialis. And you do have to be very mindful, it is very tender in some of these areas, and you don't want to just be just blatantly applying aggressive uh, pressure unless it's absolutely needed. All right, so let's work some of the, um, the, uh, um, the flexor muscles here. So we're going to flex the wrist now let's go ahead and extend the elbow and flex or and, and extend the wrist. So again, we're going to bend the elbow. And not necessary to uh, bend the elbow in all cases, but more importantly to flex the wrist since we're dealing with the uh, flexor uh, groups here in the forearm. We're going to apply our tension a bit distally. And then let's go ahead and extend. We're going to extend that wrist, lengthening these muscles and applying some firm pressure along this tissue. And palpating right now, I can feel that pronator teres is uh, pretty bound up too. And uh, oftentimes uh, that median nerve can get entrapped in the uh, pronator teres and mimic carpal tunnel syndrome too. So while we're here, we're just going to do a little bit of work on this. Let's go over that. We want to pronate and shorten the... Um, the pronator muscle and then we're going to supinate and lengthen this up. And we're going to glide over it. Working back into this cubital fossa, breaking this stuff up. And depending on where the patient is experiencing any type of numbness or tingling into the hands, um, it can really point to whether you're dealing with the median nerve entrapment, radial nerve entrapment, to ulnar nerve entrapment. Um, so you can then be uh, more specific on, on which uh, muscle tissues you want to focus in on. Being more of your extensors here, we're definitely getting really congested right in there. 
or your flexors. So the extensors, what we're going to do is start in an extended position, and then we're going to go ahead and flex and go ahead and make a fist for me. Good. Really lengthen those out. Good. And we're going to go ahead and flex the wrist back, and then we're going to have them go ahead and make a fist. Good. Keep rolling the fist down. The next technique that I'm going to be performing is called bloodletting, and we're going to be focusing on the Jing Well um, points here of the lung and large uh, lung and large intestine. So, for you acupuncturists out there, you know what I'm referring to. Um, if you're not a li licensed acupuncturist, um, do not try this. Um, I am, did not sue me, bro. I'm not legally responsible. So, um, in saying that. The reason why that I'm choosing to use the uh, bloodletting techniques on the Qing well is because of its effect on circulating blood rapidly through those meridians involved. And since we're dealing with a tremendous amount of congestion here in lung one and lung two, and down the whole lung channel, um, that's what I want to focus in on. And this LI uh, channel is also in involved could consider doing the Luo uh, points too, but for uh, today's demonstration, I'm just gonna stick with the Jing Well. So, um, gonna go ahead and take our cotton swab here, sanitize our, our, our points here. I'm gonna set that right there. And I'm gonna use a new needle. going to use a new needle here and what we're going to do we're going to start here and we're going to start getting some blood towards that Jing well point and as you can see it's starting to get a little bit more red and, and, and filled up with blood there and then what we're going to do is ask our patient to go ahead and take a nice inhale good and exhale when you're ready good and what we want is about 10 drops of blood out of that Jing Well point. And sometimes it's really nice, you'll uh, bleed that Jing Well and they'll take one big final sigh and you'll feel that whole fascial tissue just relax. And there it was, there was that final, I don't know if you noticed that, but just that final deep sigh, especially when dealing with the lungs and maybe some of the emotional uh, connections with it. Good. And then we're going to go ahead and do the LI channel. We're going to do the exact same technique. So we're drawing some blood into that Jing well there. And it nice and primed and ready. And then we're going to ask our patient to go ahead and take a nice inhale. Good. And exhale when you're ready. All right. I know. Some of my clients love me. Some of them hate me. Where are you at today? I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's a necessary evil. It, it, it is. But sometimes, too, patients will feel a flushing sensation go down the arm into the hands. Maybe a warmth sensation. Maybe a cold sensation. And again, we want to go ahead and get uh, 10 drops there.
So I'm definitely one of those practitioners that likes big cheese. So I usually ask my patients to express back to me when they feel that dull, achy sensation as if I'm pressing on the bruise. But for today's demonstration, that isn't necessary. We're gonna go ahead and get in there. Let me know when it feels achy. Now when needling over the chest, if you're trained well, you will know that uh, you have to be extremely cautious and observant on your needle depth in order to avoid uh, pneumothorax. Certainly not what we're going to be doing today. Yeah, that's a strong achy one right there. And I think we're going to get this pec major motor point right there too. Get in this pec minor right here. Again, being very mindful of needle depth. This is a demonstration only. Good, we're going to come down to our lung channel. Can easily select some points to, I think, on the pericardium channel, which um, you know might be applicable. Now this boy is that sucker right there taut. Get into that. Nice achy, heavy sensation there. And of course, in this case, I like that using lung five. Certainly, PC would be appropriate, I think, too. I get in there. Oof, that's a nice, nice, yummy point right there for sure. And let's get our sheet cleft rocking. That was a strong one. <laughs> and last point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select uh, lung three for for a shoestring point. Let's try that again because that sucker pushed me away. And for our last point, we're going to select uh, lung three, our shoestring point. Get in there. Good. All right, so there you have it, um, combined with some advanced myofascial techniques, and then we applied uh, some acupuncture and some bloodletting to uh, the treatment today. This is just an example of how important it is to use uh, really good hand techniques to be able to manipulate the uh, myofascial uh, regions that you're working to improve your clinical results. So if you're interested, check out my courses down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button, show me some love, and I'll see you in the next episode.